السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتقاله وليه ونعوذ بالله من شر أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يد الله فلا مد الله وما يد الله فلا هدي الله ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب مبين يا أهل الذين آمنوا تقول لله حق وتقاتلوا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقول ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلقكم من زوج بثر منهم رجال كثير ونساء وتقول لله حق الذي تسألون به والأرهام إن الله كان لكم راكبا اللهم الحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله جل يوم الجمعة سعيد رعينا من وانا أبدو ولا نستعن إلى ولا إله إلا الله فرد رسالة الجمعة بالقول إلى الله يا الله ولا يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا ندي إلى سلعة من يوم الجمعة فصل ذكر الله إذا ربي أمكمن ومكرسون هم الذين آمنوا وتتمنى قلوبهم ذكر الله إلا بذكر الله تتمنى قلوب Truly praises for Allah, we praise Him, we seek His help, and we seek His forgiveness, we put our trust in Him, and we seek refuge in Allah from evil of our own selves and our wrong actions, and whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead us astray, and whomsoever cannot be guided, no, no one can guide them. We bear witness that there is no deity but Allah, one without a partner, we bear witness that Muhammad is His worshiper and messenger, and blessings of Allah and peace and blessings be upon Him and His family and companions. Allah, praise be to Him. Mosai said in his clear book, O you who have attained to faith, fear Allah as he should be feared, and do not die as saved that is yours, Muslims. And O people, fear your Lord that created you for oneself, and from it it's made, and from the twain spread out a multitude of men and women. Fear Allah and your claim over one another, and toward the wounds for which you have come. Truly Allah is watcher over over you. Praise be to Allah who made the day of congregation to be the best of days we do not worship, and we do not seek aid other than from he who made the congregational worship obligatory for us as witness in the sayings of the Most High. O oh, you who have attained to faith, if you hear the call from Salah on the day of congregation, make haste to the remembrance of Allah and leave your trading. The sincere believers are those who have believed, whose hearts find rest in the remembrance in Allah, in Allah. Truly only in the remembrance of Allah do, do people find, the hearts find their rest. In the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to us in Surah Al-Kaf, which we have been talking about, in terms of Musa and Khidr, he says, وَأَيْوَرْدُرُوا عَلَى رَبِكَ السَّفَى لَقَادَ دَجْتُمُنَ وَكَمَالُ كَلَاكَ كُمْبِنَ أَوَلَ مَرَاتِمْ بَلْزَمَاتُمْ أَلَنْ نَجْلَنْ لَكُمْ مَعُودِ مَعُودِي عَلَى كِتَابِ فَتَرَ وَمُجِرِمِنَا مُشْفِكَنَا مِمَا فِهِ وَلْيَكُلُونَ وَيَوَيْلَاتَنَا مِنْ لَحَذَّ وَكَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْكَسَهَا وَوَجَدْرَ مِأَمِلُ هَذْرَ وَيَالِمُنُ وَرَبِكُ أَحَادَ وَذَكُونَ لِنَ مَلَكَاتِ إِلَى جُدُو لِعَدْمًا وَسَجُودِ إِلَى إِبْرَالِيسِ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَسَاقَ وَأَمْرِ رَبِهِ أَفْتَادَ كَذَرُ نَحْوَ وَذَوْرِيَاتِ رَهُوَ أَلِيَ اللَّهِ مِنْ دُونِهُمْ لَكُمْ عَدُو ما أشاهدهم كلاك السماوات والأرض وكلاك أنفسهم ما كنتم مقدر المدلنا أدود ويوم يقول النبي شكرا للذين أزنتم الدوم فلم يستجيب لهم فجان بينهم ما بكا. he says in the Quran and they will set before your Lord in rows, and he's now set, set before your Lord in rows, and he shall say, now you have assuredly come to us and we created you in the first place, but in the past you claimed that we had not made this appointment for you. And the book of deeds will be placed open and you will see the wrongdoing, fearful of that which he inscribed within it, and they will say, woe is us, what kind of a book is this that leaves out neither the small nor the great, but has enumerated everything? And they will find out what they did, present before them, and your Lord will, will wrong no one. And remember when he said to the angels, prostrate to Adam, and they prostrated all except Iblis. He was from the jinn, and he rebelled against the command of the Lord. Will you choose him and his seed as protectors instead of me when they are your enemies? It is a wretched exchange for the oppressors of others and themselves. 
I did not call them to witness the creation of heavens and earth, nor their own creation, and I did not take their misguiders as my helpers, and be mindful of the day when he will say, call those you claimed were my partners, and then they will call upon them, but they will not answer, and we shall set a gulf of destruction between them. And Allah also says in, in the Quran, in Surah the Mukminun, um, Surah 23, Mukminun, he says, Afahsabatum annama khalaqnakum abathnan wa annakum ilayna, annakum ilayna la turjuun, fata'ala illaha malakatu ha haq, la ilaha illahu rabbil wa ashi al-kareem. Do you think that we created you as a joke and that you would not be returned to us? So exalted is Allah the sovereign, the sovereign, the truth. There is no deity save him, Lord of the seed of generous authority. <clears throat> the Prophet وسلم, said, O community of people who believe by their tongue and belief did not enter their heart. Do not backbite Muslims. Do not search for their fault. For if anyone searches for their faults, Allah will search for his fault. And if Allah searches for the fault of anyone, he's, he disgraces him in his house. And Allah has said in the holy book, which I had read to you, and then also he says, Allah has not a soul beyond its scope, nor lay a burden upon a soul beyond its ability to carry it. For it is only that which hath him earned, and against it is that which he has deserved. O Lord, condemn us not if we forget to miss the mark. O Lord, lay not us on a burden that we did not, that you did not lay on those before us. O Lord, do impose not upon us that we not have the strength to bear. Pardon us, absolve us, have mercy upon us. And thou art our protector, give us mercy for over those who disbelieve. The topic of the khutbah today is, in some way, the dignity and responsibility of human beings as individuals and our capacity to have dignity. <clears throat> and inshallah, we have to ask ourselves to what degree do we take the dignity away from ourselves by our thoughts and by our actions. And also, as I said last night, that you know, if we have earned some of the, the joys and the pains that we're experiencing, then we should learn from them and we should move forward. And Allah says that we have earned them, and that if we correct the faults here and now, then that correction will be read to us also on the day of reckoning. Inshallah, Allah will give us the ability to speak for a little while on the subject. I'll try not to make it as long as <laughs> it seems to be prepared. It's obvious from the quotations that are given and the other things that you already know and have heard and recited that the individual has important status in Islam, contributions that Islam has made to the social philosophy and the political philosophies of the world are both positive and now in the hands of really people who don't understand Islam, we can't say that they're contributions of Islam, but people who call themselves Muslims are not so positive in certain areas of the world. But the religious and the spiritual thought lies deep and, it ha and it's always about the rights and the dignity of others. Loyalty, care, and concern, accepting where Allah has placed one and trusting. Allah gives real status and dignity to human beings and raises us higher in esteem because before Islam, honor and dignity and rights were, were just re were, were reserved for special groups of individuals, and we still see it in the world today. Perhaps it's based on a person's wealth or birthright or or a level of society that they find in themselves. But Islam destroyed those differences and presented a concept of human honor and dignity f fully. Well, that we could stand here today and say that every Muslim understood it and abided by it, and unfortunately, it's not true. One cannot build a building on air it has to stand on a firm foundation. And we can at least say that the foundation for this is strong in Islam. Some buildings have been built, some have not been completed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we created man indeed in the best of modes and he deserves dignity and honor as a human being because of that. And the excellency that we have within us can be brought forward through our practices through our Islam and at the same time Allah said then we abased him to the lowest and then we abased him to the lowest of the low and that is so we would be sure that each one of us would have both a sense of honor and dignity as well as humility 
Human beings, out of their own negligence and out of their own fear, rebel against their own good nature. And we reduce ourselves to the lowest of the, of the low. O oh, mankind, surely we have created you from a male and a female and have made your tribes and families so that you may know each other. Surely the noblest of you is with Allah is the most righteous of you. And you note that none of this had to do with a person's social status. None of it had to do with their wealth. None of it had to do with their family name. Everyone stands equally before Allah, honored as human beings according to these ayat in the Quran. And it, did, and it denies with a lot of emphasis that anyone can claim more dignity or no one, I should say, can claim more dignity and honor than anyone else. But it also tells us that there should be no discrimination between individuals, except in goodness, in the sense that relative goodness should inspire us all. And there's a basis and foundation for building a good society here. But we also know that human beings bring themselves down. The entire philosophy of the Islamic view of human creation is an endowment of the divine upon the human being for a special capacity of knowledge. And each one of us, male or female, poor or rich, intelligent or not so intelligent, from a developed or undeveloped place in the world, can draw from that potential, from that font, from that source. Even people who are in physical pain or loss or a mental state of loss can draw something from that divine fountain. Everything points to the importance of the individual. Everything points to the importance of how that individual functions, acts, conducts themselves, not just as an individual, however, but what makes it unique is that how the individual fits within the community into the, in, into the momentary community, into jamaat, into the, into the larger ummah. So in the community means that with the cooperation of other members of the community. So that encompasses a lot of things. Today we received an email about trying to schedule a meeting, a very important meeting. And that meeting cannot be scheduled because not the, most, the important people who have to be in that meeting Cannot, will not all be here on the same weekend throughout the month of January. Now, we have to ask ourselves, what does that really mean? Why should we have to change the schedule? Why shouldn't you? Simple as that. It means your scheduling, capabilities, your contribution, your understanding, your role as a teacher, your role as a student, as a marid, or even as a just a resident. Every one of us has to work in the community, with the community, for the community, in order to realize our own individuality. And if you think that the community is any different than Islam or the Ummah, then you're sorely wrong. And if you think that everything outside of your preferences is going to, everything, only your preferences uh, are going to be written down in the book, you're wrong. It's also your tendencies, your thoughts, and your actions. Or maybe I should say it the other way. If you think that only your actions and your words are going to be written down, you're wrong. It's also your intentions. And this is so partly because it will help to, this community understanding is something that's not secondary. It's very primary to Islam. And I spoke to you last night about the different shayuk, the different levels of the, shay of the shaykhs. And, and, and what that means. And I hope you grasped it. And we'll talk more about that when we talk about the Abdals and the, and, and the Anwars and the, and, and, and the Gauth. But you have to understand that the, that the community that is being referred to in these ayat, that the gathering together at the end of the day is that the recognition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all things is because it helps to create an atmosphere and an environment favorable to the mission of Allah. And what is the mission of Allah but to bring peace and mercy and compassion and love to people and humility and gratitude. Without communities that are built on these principles, as large or as small as they may be, 
the individual's function and mission becomes difficult and even impossible to attain. Many places call themselves communities. When we went visiting colleges, every one of those colleges called themselves a community when we visited them. Every college, every university calls itself a community. Companies call themselves community. Google calls itself a community. Microsoft calls itself a community. But what is it based on? Is it based on the fact that they have open desks and, 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 and uh, exercise equipment and really good food? And good to go along with good pay? Is it based on the fact that you root for the team? How long is it your community? Four years, three years, four years? While you're in residence there? Or as long as you have a job? But the community is defined in different ways. The community has to be defined by the values and the principles of the individuals. Not just two or three people in the community you get along with. I mean, I'm sure that everything as large as Virginia Tech to as small as Lynchburg College calls themselves a community. But how many people are you in real contact with in that community in reality, you know? But without communities that are built on these principles, the individual functions, it becomes impossible. It because, partly because of this concept, the human being will be able to establish an infrastructure and a mechanism to invite others toward a law, towards one's work, towards one's mission, through their actions and their attitudes. This is the real dawah. It's based on the capability and the responsibility of the individual within the community and the means to which that reaches the blessing, reaches the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that means the wasil, the wasil. The establishment of justice between human beings and the results of it will be the activity and the work of that human being. And though it's centered on the effort of the individual, it is also cooperation and in conjunction with other individuals to organize work within the community, to sustain the community, to take the talents of the people in the community. I don't say that all your talents only should go, Abu Bakr's talent should only go toward building in Blacksburg or somewhere, or your talent should only go to the Montessori school in, 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 which they don't, thank God, but it's in Lynchburg. Or your talent should only go wherever you will place it. No, that's not the way it operates. Those talents should be mined for the good of the ummah. Just as if when you come, when you come to prayer in Jamaat, you mine the piety of the whole group and stand behind the imam facing the Qibla so that the line of energy comes in both directions, not just in one direction. It comes from these letters and these words to you and from your heart back to the Qibla, to Allah. And in that way, with cooperation and organization, each one of us helps to establish justice individually and collectively, and love and mercy and, cons and, and kindness. And in the final analysis, which we discussed in the reading of Quran and Surah Al-Khaf and, and, and the other surahs, it is the individual and not the society that's to be tested and judged and who will reap the gains and pay the price of one's judgments and actions. You're judged as an individual, but it's through the work of yourself in the community of believers. And that's really an interesting concept to contemplate. Yeah. Every one of us, every, every one of our efforts to organize a group of us who believe in and strive and live by values and ideology based on the principles of Tawheed is meant to really create a civilization that will illustrate by actions its infrastructure, the fullness, its critical and creative thinking values to others so that humanity can truly finally understand and fully understand or near fully understand the purpose of this creation and to continue to follow the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sayr Allah. So in this life, which is a struggle, sometimes it happens, perhaps often, that individual lives are even to be sacrificed for the sake of society. 
so that the generations that follow will continue to be free and receive guidance and develop themselves in a right and healthy way. I refer you back to the story of Musa and Khidr from the weekend that you find in the Holy Quran. If these sacrifices are not done or if they are made for objectives that are material, political, not spiritual, in short term, then the future generations of individuals will fail. They will find misguidance instead of guidance. They'll wander away from the straight path and you will see a world like we're seeing today of ignorant people in the name of religion destroying human life and the wonders of human life. Look how many lives have been sacrificed for the wrong reasons for generations. Look how far humanity has wandered away from the right path in just today. If I gave this quote for 20 years ago, we could, we'd give other names. We'd say Bosnia. We'd say, uh, other, we, we'd say uh, uh, Rwanda. Today we say Syria. Today we say South Sudan. Today we say wherever we say. So many places. Mexico, drug wars. Chicago, drug wars. Look how split human beings are, how much war there is, how much ethnic violence there is, how much disagreement and misery human beings impose upon one another. And that's because the idea of sacrifice as it comes down from our father Ibrahim alayhi salam is that it is for a purpose and transcends this world and personal desires. And if people do commit themselves for the right reason, they even sacrifice their lives, then the guidance will be there for them to develop their true self. Individuals will be able to grow and develop and pass the capa capability, that capability on for generations upon generations. And in Surah Baqarah it says, and spend of your substance in the cause of Allah and make not your own hands contribute to your destruction. How many people? Hard to say. But obviously this message is still alive. And any period in history, any era in history will find the misery there. So it hasn't been completely suppressed, completely killed, but then we didn't live in a globalized society either. Where the actions in one place carry immediately to the actions in another place and spur the similar actions in copycat wars and copycat, uh, copycat uh, crimes so quickly. So there is an exponential aspect to this. So it means also environmentally, the idiot people who say, oh, look, it's cold, so there's no such thing as global warming. Don't they care about their children, their grandchildren, and their great-grandchildren, these people? They don't care. They only care about their short-term political gains. And then the scientists get on and say, well, global, it's not global warming, it's global climate change. And by the way, last year, last year we had the hottest year in history, and right now New Zealand and Australia are having the hottest years that they've ever had. So by the way, global warming also works too. But the fact that it's going to be minus 38 degrees tomorrow in Chicago with the wind chill, that's saying something. And this is 2014. And what will our children be saying in 2025? Environmentally, politically, socially, in the family, psychologically, emotionally, within our own self, we're warned, we're cautioned that we have a duty to establish and maintain the straight path and the way to Allah. We have to maintain not only the ummah, our section of the ummah, but the jamaat, the constant gathering. And it's true that this requires sacrifices of time and energy and money, sometimes of health, sometimes of our lives and our efforts to serve others. How many good people have passed this from this world in their service of other human beings? Go to the United Nations and look at the wall where their names are. How many peacekeeping forces have died? How many NGO people have lost their lives in the pursuit of goodness in this world? It's not just look crazy bombers who kill themselves and others. But without it, not only two generations or two and a half generations, almost three generations that sit in this room, but the future generations are endangered. There's no sustainability of values. 
just like the earth and nature are endangered by the same negative mentality I'm discussing, so too everything that has to do with nature is endangered. We are an endangered species as human beings. Not in the sense that we're going to become extinct because we're not reproducing, but because we are endangered because the whole point of existence is endangered. You take wild animals, put them in a cage, they lose their ability to live outside the cage. Even if you have a lot of them, they're in danger because they can't continue their natural way of life. We'll bring people in this world to ruin. If we ruin the world today, we ruin it for the future. And if we have no sense of values within ourselves, how do we pass the values on to the future generations? If we have no thought of justice, how will justice emerge in future generations? If we don't know how to repent, how will others learn to forgive? So disbelievers, which in each case means materialistic individuals who live only for the now and collect for their own pleasures or indulge themselves in the non-material way in their own states of mind and emotions will dominate this society. And we see the rise and the fall of those influences over the past hundred years or so. We see that the negativity, the distrust, the suspicion, the psycho-emotional imbalances begin to dominate society and creates a condition that encourages wrongdoing and deprives the present generation as well as future generations as the right guidance. It leads people to the living hell. And if you don't believe this is the reality, then go turn on reality television. The worst thing I can say about reality television is that it reflects the reality. The mothers, who are, the mothers who are pushing their kids in their dance classes, the crazy people who are, who are, the crazy people who are fighting each other, the mafia wives, the this, the that. The Botox lady with her lips like that, the mafia wife who's going to prison, because Gino's going to prison, the honey boo-boos. That's reality, that's a reality. My God, it may be fun to watch, but don't think it's immune, you're immune from the diseases. Because if somebody watched the reality of the average person in this world today, just the average person, at some point that's going to become bizarre. And so the Quran has in very few words condensed the whole history, human history where sacrifices are needed to establish a true and righteous society to protect it from enemies within and without. Just like the Constitution says, um, just like everybody who swears, every senator, every one of our congressmen friends, every, uh, the President of the United States swears. Was was. The onomatopoeia was was, to whisper. Those who do not make sacrifices, who are not willing to expand themselves, are doomed by their own self. They or we are not willing to spend our wealth or our time or our comfort. We are not willing to contribute with our hands the goods we have, the time we have, the knowledge we have. We're contributing to our own destruction, if that's the case. The enemies are always making sacrifices. The enemies are sending someone into battle to die in the name of something for the good of one or two or five or a hundred people or some oppressive leader, the children in the first Iraq-Iran war being sent into battle. Now look at Libya today, or Yemen today, or Egypt today, or Tunisia today, South Sudan today, parts of China today. Despots are still there. People sent to die in battle. Go out into the streets. So many times the leaders, they go out into the streets, and where do they sit? They sit in their homes. Send the young people out. No, the enemy has no problem making sacrifices, just like the shaitan has no problem lying. They exploit resources, make people work hard day and night, exploit people's intelligence, threaten them, families to get their capabilities out of them. They appeal to the lowest domination of human nature. They do that to protect the wrong and the evil systems and expect no punishment in the hereafter. And in a sense, they are somewhat free to exploit for temporary and short-lived gain and pleasures and enjoyments. People sacrifice their health every day for the physical pleasures of their life. They sacrifice their values for it. They betray one another for it. And at the same time, people who are believers who try, who try to follow the sunnah have a lot of happiness and peace in life. Sometimes we find them withholding exactly what's needed. It may be your wealth, time, knowledge, or intelligence, and that has to change. But we sit comfortably in our homes. Alhamdulillah, we have 
jobs, illusions, fantasies too. We let someone else fight the enemy with sticks and stones when the enemy has nuclear weapons. Isn't it obvious that our lack of generosity causes so much destruction, destroys our own destiny? What is it that makes people feel life is worth living? News report yesterday that, that adolescent president of North Korea, he got his wish. What was his wish? A ski lift. His people are starving and he got a ski lift because when he went to school in Switzerland, he loved ski lifts. So he got a ski lift. Well, people are dying and starving and he's executing his own relatives. Huh? We should just drop some lithium in the water. And by the way, there's a very interesting report you might read of why we don't use the non-lethal weapons that we have spent hundreds of millions of dollars developing over the last 20 years. Why we don't use the non-lethal weapons. Very interesting report. It's not what you think. Well, I don't know what you think, but it's probably not what you think. The Quran clearly points out that we are created alone as individuals, not in groups. We are not created in groups, except for taking too much of the wrong medicine. If you want to have babies and you can't have babies, you might have six or eight of them. We're created as individuals. And yet, even though we're created as individuals, we are expected to, we are commanded to, we are encouraged to, we are uplifted by playing our part in the establishment of a community, of society, social system, civilization, if you will. The individuals build that jamaat and that ummah. The concept of our individual participation, rights, claims, property, remain the center point of the earth for all cultures and civilization. Quran asks people to remember that we were created singly. And then what happens? And then from the twain, came out multitudes of people. And it says, we'll meet Allah again on the day of judgment, awakening, as I said, and they will be marshaled into ranks and greeted with, now you come to us bare and alone as we created you at first. But we will be judged on, as individuals how we participated in our communities. Because that's the only way we can test ourselves, our jealousies, our strengths, our weaknesses, how we disseminate our knowledge, how we fulfill our duties and our obligations, how we define that community. Allah wants us not to define that community by blood. If it was so, he wouldn't care about the orphans. If it was so, he would not care about the mingling of tribes. If it was so, he would not care about guaranteeing the rights of other communities, like the Christian community or the Jewish community. Individuality is ultimately important in Islam, we are individuals, and on our own, and not as any group or community, we'll be, we will be held account accountable, but in our relationship to the community. We won't come before Allah as the world community and say, well, here we are. He messed up, but his good actions took care of his bad actions. That's not the way it's going to be. Oh. Ya Allah, here comes the world community. The Quran makes it very clear that the individual is alone, sovereign, and will appear before Allah alone. Even though as an individual we have to carry on our responsibilities, Allah will not give us a burden we cannot bear. And even though we are to act as individuals, our growth and our development depends on how we act as individuals. Our ultimate success or failure will depend on how we act within community. Don't take my word for it. It's in here. Oh, and by the way, it's in the Torah. Oh, and by the way, it's in the Injil. Oh, and by the way, it's in the Bhagavad Gita. Oh, and by the way, it's in the Dharmapada. Oh, and by the way, oh, and by the way, and by the way. Why? Because the truth is the truth. Every, con every, con every group discovers it. But no group focused on it. No group focused on it like Islam did. It's just a historical fact. We will benefit on losing 
We will benefit or lose depending on our own actions, and each one of us can only follow the right way, take the right guidance, surround ourselves by the right people in the right environment. Oh yeah, we'd like to think we can construct the right environment, but you know how hard it's been. I thought we could construct it, and we have, by the grace of you all, not me. By the grace of Allah and by the, by the efforts of you all, I should say. And whether or not we fulfill our personal responsibility will depend on not on our personal responsibilities reflected in the community we are part of only, but what our intentions are. The whole drama of human life played out on the earth comes to an end one day when every actor in his drama or play comes forward for the applause or for the booze. And I don't mean booze, I mean booze, ooh. The nature of our life on this earth will testify for us or against us. We will be judged on the basis of our performance and nothing else will influence that. And at the same time, we have to remember this very serious subject matter. The role of the individual is most important from the viewpoint of ourself because it determines our position at the end of life. It also determines the future course of our life in the afterlife. But it is related to each one of us, our relation to each one of us. So, we don't believe that life ends when this physical life ends. It's very essential for us to believe, to be conscious of our duties and responsibilities. And if we fail to realize how serious this is, and we waste our valuable time and our energies in useless excuse making, useless action, indolence, we will destroy ourselves through our ignorance and face a terrible end for a long time. So we have to give very serious thought to the purpose of creation. Special emphasis on the position of human beings. Be grateful for when we are placed in a situation where we can serve and help others. Society exists to provide each individual, according to Islam, with the right kind of environment, facilities, conditions under which each one of us may or may not attain to have a higher level. What is it we will give up? What is negotiable and what is not negotiable? How important is it? How many zeros are on our paycheck? The real serious question. Doesn't mean we don't want it. We can't use, we can't put to benefit more zeros on our end of our paycheck. Fine. But what is really important? We can make, what excuses do we make to get what we want? And are we sure that what we want is what it is what Allah wants for us? And are we sure? 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 How do we know? We're so arrogant. We think we know, we're sure we know. And all we have to do is convince one or two people and then we get the support. But realizing our goals physically, emotionally, spiritually, enriching our culture, expanding our life. So the real goal of true behavior is to work hard in life to enrich the culture and the global civilization for the attainment of a higher state of human consciousness. And we help in the advancement of our society materially and spiritually so that humanity in general may follow the way of goodness and purity and compassion and mercy and justice. And we ourselves have to leave aside the desire for that material reward in any form from anyone and to obey the commands of Allah and receive those material rewards that inevitably come if you trust with gratitude and humility. And those who honor such individuals again honor themselves. And when the individuals accomplish this, Allah says, to the righteous soul will be said, O you soul, in complete peace and satisfaction, come back to your Lord, well pleased and well pleasing in him, to him. Enter you among my servants, enter my paradise. That's the end of the story. That's the creation story. The assignment of the Khalifat, the Vice Regency, our free will and freedom to act, our need for individual success, growth, freedoms based on equality, equity, liberty. In each one of us, we can endeavor to free ourselves, but the freedom that is based on our place in society, our community, the benefit of everyone, systems under which freedom can reign for individuals and collectively. Society and the community itself assists the individual it's not transferable, there's no intercessor, and you cannot pay anyone to bribe to get you through the gate, only your good actions and remembering the role of community. But that's what Allah is, wants us to remember. Again, it's his words, Allah forgive me for making them too hard to understand. 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma sunna finaka khairu nasirin wa aftar finaka khairu fatihin wa firlana finaka khairu gafirin warhamna finaka khairu rahimin wa zukhana finaka khairu razikin wa hadana najana minna khamil dhalamin wa hablana rihan tayabatin kama hiya fi ilmika wa anshuruna alayna bin kazahna ya rahmatik wa hilmna nana bihamala kamalmati ma salamati mi afiyati fi dini wa dunya wa akhira ala kuli shayin kadir. اللهم يا سيلا أمرنا مهراتي وكلبنا أبدنا مسلماتي بعافيتي في دوننا ودننا ونسألك إيمانا دائما ونسألك قلبا كاشيا ونسألك علما نافيا ونسألك دينا كائما ونسألك نافية من كل بلايا ونسألك تامنا إلى عافيت ونسألك دام عافية ونسألك شكر على عافية إنك على كل شيء كدير اللهم وصفير فوجنا بنور صفاتك وأدك نبشرنا يوم القيامة بين أولك وجعل يدك ما بسوتنا لنا و احسن و من من به رحمتی و کن نه صاحب نه مسافر نه و کلفت فی احسن و می سر و جهاد نه و سکه هم مال ما کدانت ما ما کانت تهم فعلا یاست اینو نمودی لال مجی لالینا یعنی مال مجی یعنی مال مجی یعنی مال مجی. او ولا در لوز مانگس هو ایل هو ار این پین و هو سفرین در لوز هو وی نو who have passed, we know those of our community, we know those who are important people in the world who are in need of our prayers, loved ones, friends, who ask of our prayers, people in confusion, we ask of Allah to give us the capacity to serve them through our prayers and through our sincerity and through our work, inshallah. Make your own dua and own show. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله ونعم على من استهنا ومن استغفر ونؤمن به من تكلى ولي ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والملائكات المكارمين وأولي الصالحين والمهجدين في الدين رحمة ورحمة ورحمين قال الله سبحانه وتعالى كتاب مبين إن من إن الله ملكة يسلون على النبي يا الله ليد العمل وصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد اللهم ورد صداتنا كل في رشدين وأبو بخاري نصديك عمر الفاروقي ورؤوس من النورين وعلى سيدنا أمام كالله علي كلام الله واجه ورد اللهم أنا سيدنا حسن سيدنا حسين وعلى أمه مسيادة تريفات مزهرة و آل بیت کرام و آجواجی نبی تکتهرات اماتری مخمنین و صحباتی صالحین و تابین و تابین و ابدیم و مخلصین بی اسلامین امنیم اکسانی یوم دین ابدال این الله یمور و بی ادلی و اکسان تهدی کرب و یانها رفشای و مخری و باقی یاد کم را لکل تلاکل مذکر الله را بار. I wanted to say that before we pray that I don't know if you know how I prepare these chutpahs. Sometimes I have the time I write a completely new one. Sometimes I go back to something and use notes from the previous years. And when I do that, it's quite arbitrary. I just go and I go to like 1994 or 1996 and I look at a Juma and I adjust it and I rewrite it and I update it and I use it as a basic idea. You know that I have been speaking about al Khidr and the message of al Khidr. And you heard the message today, and it's very familiar to you, but everything that I've been talking about this week. I just opened up my computer because I forgot it was Friday. And I was so busy on Skype and so busy on emails and so busy on Facebook uh, IMs today and, and, and the research I was doing that I forgot it was Friday. I got quite late, and I opened it up, and this was my eye fell on this one, and that was it. So you see, truly, you've got to believe that Allah, His hand is in everything. Because, I mean, do you know how many thousands, thousands, thousands? First I had to pick the year, then I had to pick the month, then I had to pick the day, then I did this. Then I usually look through eight or ten of them to find out something that I feel I want to write on or I want to adjust. You know, why should I? You know? 
not do that. So I just want to tell you that, you know, if it works for me, it should work for you. That's all. Well, how can we say so that, inshallah?